Hey guys, Jeb here, and the impossible has actually happened, and we're gonna go over that. Call of Duty and Activision finally put out a blog post in regards to skill-based matchmaking. If you recall, Sledgehammer, when MW3 first launched, had a subreddit thread where they were wanting to talk about the game, and it got spammed with people talking about skill-based matchmaking. So Activision put out a statement that said, sometime after season one's release, they're gonna actually talk about it. And well, Season one's about to end. Season two's launching, I believe, next week. So they have to talk about it at this point if they were keeping the word. And we do have a blog post. Now, we're going to read through it and then we're going to talk about it because it, it could have a whole lot of nothingness because they're not being very specific. So they said today... Today's Intel is tending to kick off the dialogue and a new beginning for what we hope is an ongoing conversation about matchmaking, sharing our process and learnings to answer real questions and concerns. Uh, the blog will focus on how it only works in multiplayer, not Warzone or ranked play. They're going to talk about that at a later date. Uh, for players that heard the term but aren't familiar with it, we're referring to matchmaking as a multi-factor process to place players on teams with and against each other to complete in online games. A lot of people don't know what skill-based matchmaking is. People who don't actually, you know, go online, look at Twitter, and you know, watch videos, they're never going to hear about it. So they're trying to break it down for those. And FYI, if you didn't know about it, now you do. Uh, they said the biggest priority with respect to ma multiplayer matchmaking is delivering a fun experience to their players. Well, they have many years of testing. And if you recall, we started seeing it really pop off in Black Ops 2. So if you want to go about 10, 11, 12 years. That's about as long as it's been going on, at least from what we've seen. We're continuously working to deliver the best experience possible. For that reason, we continue to test and look forward to more enhancements to come. We often see the communities refer to our matchmaking system as skill-based matchmaking. Call of Duty does consider skill, or more specifically, player performance as a component, as do most in the industry. And we've seen this come out with Fall Guys. But skill is not the dominant variable. We consider and prioritize several factors to create lobbies. So we're going to go ahead and go down here and show how their flow works when it comes to matching you into a lobby. And they say, first and foremost, it's connection. As the community will attest, which we don't, ping is king. Connection is the most critical and heavily weighted factor in the matchmaking process. They say that is the number one thing. That's what the community believes should be the number one thing but we don't see it that often. Time to match. The factor, this factor is the second most critical to the matchmaking process. We all want to spend time playing the game rather than waiting for matches to start. So in theory, if it notices it's taking you much longer to put into a match, they're going to try and just push you into whatever you can. That's kind of why VPNs have become more popular. I've noticed that it'll stretch out your match time. And in doing so, it finally decides we just need to give them players because it's taking too long. Number three, the following factors are also critical to the matchmaking process. Of note, I don't think they are ranking them in priority of what they are playing. I think in this section, they're just listing them out. Player diversity, which the number of playlists available for players to choose from, which we used to know back in the day, there was player numbers, and then Black Ops 3 went to percentages, and then we haven't really seen that since. Recent maps or modes, considering maps you have recently played on as well as your mode preferences, Editable in the quick play settings. Interesting. It's not mentioning the featured ones. It says quick play settings, but it could be included, um, which is weird because some of these modes have very few maps. If you look at 10v10, you'll see that. Skill performance. This is used to give our players a global community with a wide skill range the opportunity to have an impact in every match. I like how it's spaced out there like... You know, a global community. Mm. Input device, controller or mouse and keyboard. Which you notice in the higher skill lobbies, you're seeing more keyboards and mouse. At least I've noticed it in mine. Platform, the device, PC console that you're playing on, voice chat enabled or disabled. That's an interesting one because I have all of mine disabled because I can't really hear anything through PS5, and it also prevents stuff from coming on the stream. Every time a player begins matchmaking in multiplayer, for example, the process needs to work through all these factors to find other players, all of which are also being analyzed to quickly assemble a lobby that is stable and competitive, right? Ranked is supposed to be competitive. Public should just be throw everybody in a match and see what happens. These factors have resulted in a process that we believe provides the best player experience and creates a stronger community for Call of Duty worldwide. Let's get more technical on a few of these factors. Okay. Measuring connection for matchmaking. It says whether you're playing for fun with friends. I'm sorry, but in this day and age, most people can't play with their friends. That's 
you'll see a lot of people complaining about that or looking to climb the leaderboards nobody cares about leaderboards these days unless it's ranked connection is the most important part of the online call of duty experience sure connection detects the speed at which the game can transfer information from every player to and from our servers Call of Duty's matchmaking process evaluates a metric we call Delta Ping, which is the difference in round trip time of data between your best data center. Almost always the closest one to you. Well, for those of you who have a net Duma, you'll be able to see exactly which servers you matchmake to. And I am in South Carolina, and I have been matchmade in Washington servers more than I ever should. I've been matchmade in California, Texas, so when I see that it should be the closest to me, even when I'm playing by myself, I understand if I'm mixing with people, but when I'm playing with myself, I'm getting match made across the country. I'm going to have a very big problem believing that. To reiterate, we always try to maximize the time we place players in data centers that are closest to them. I know. Call of Duty uses a client server model to host matches for the time it takes to share information between the player, the client, and the data center, dedicated server, has an impact on the overall feel of a match. Hmm. So in theory, everybody in that match should have about the same ping, in theory. In the Call of Duty netcode, which we've discussed in the past, works to reduce the effect of latency, but cannot completely eliminate it. The matchmaking process seeks to reduce the overall amount of latency by providing stable connections or low ping with a short and wait time in mind. I'm thinking this is pretty much them saying lag comp still exists in the game because it says they work to reduce the effect of latency but cannot completely eliminate it. So they're saying they're trying to match make everybody together with a similar ping. And if they can't, they're trying to reduce the effect of it. So lag comp is still in the game, if you are curious, which could be the reason why people are experiencing bullet stack, different damage profiles or things like that. It could be with lag comp being built into all of the other variables that's currently going on. All right, measuring time to match for matchmaking. Any form of matchmaking takes time. If the wait time in the lobby is excessively long, players typically recycle the process by canceling out of matchmaking search and restarting it or even quitting. This does not quicken the matchmaking process and in fact can be detrimental. I hate to tell you, I have probably hours of footage where we get stuck in a perpetual loop going up to less than 199 milliseconds ping and never get matchmaking to which if we back out and restart, it magically works. So I'm going to have to disagree with that. For example, in the popular Modern Warfare 3 Rustment playlist, consisting of Rust and Shipment and Rotation, players often leave lobbies and their matches early on, hoping to re into Shipment instead. Man, you're acknowledging that people want shipment 24 7. <laughs> this creates a vacant spot on the team during an early stage of the match as the matchmaking process may prioritize backfilling the spot that could result in players perceiving that rust is disproportionately selected over shipment tldr trying to cherry pick maps may have the unexpected result our goal is to ensure that players spend more time playing matches rather than waiting for them if that's the case why do you keep making rustment or anything like that if you noticed in all of these different mosh pits people are only searching for shipment you probably should leave shipment 24 seven as a guaranteed playlist. You're, you're acknowledging right now, people are leaving certain maps for others and this is causing matchmaking issues. And it sounds like, you know, we have the map skip thing, but when you have these small different priorities, like if you did shipment meet, you probably would see everybody playing everything, but rust and shipment, come on, you know better. You have the data, you talk about all the data. Measuring skill for matchmaking. Okay, well, skill is one of, of the several factors in Call of Duty multiplayer. We know community wants more information about how it fits into the process. Uh-huh. Skill is determined based on a player's overall performance. Kills, death, wins, losses, and more, including mode selection and recent matches as an overall metric across all multiplayer experiences. This is a fluid measurement that consistently updating and reacting to your gameplay. Skill is not only a factor in matchmaking players against appropriate enemies, but also when finding teammates. So it says it's a fluid measurement consistently updating and reacting to your gameplay. Not necessarily those statistics and information it's tracking, but the gameplay. So is it tracking like how we maneuver the map, our typical pathing, you know, hot spots on the map? Because if they're tracking that on every player, they in theory could throw you into the lobbies that everyone is playing the same way. 
for example, what I've noticed, like, let's just take ranked, for example. Almost everybody plays the same way, goes the same head glitches, runs the same routes. It's pretty much just what comes down to who has the best reaction time and notices people first. That's what it comes down to. So if they're taking those skills into effect and tracking that, that's why in public matches, if you're of higher skill, you notice people playing the exact same way with the exact same guns, doing the exact same thing, getting super repetitive. I've noticed that a lot, which is why we have super meta guns in the higher skill lobbies where you don't really see many other weapons. It's like MCW just is king, right? Call of Duty has historically considered player performance among other factors as part of our matchmaking process. Our work in this area dates back as early as COD 4 and 07. Skill is implemented across the video game industry and we recognize the continuous refinement and is required to deliver the best possible experience for our players. Uh, Fall Guys has come out and talked about this as well. They use player performance to ensure the disparity between the most skilled player in the lobby and the least skilled player in the lobby isn't so vast that players feel their match is a waste of time. Our data on a player outcome clearly indicates that the inclusion of skill in Call of Duty's multiplayer matchmaking process as it currently stands increases the variety of outcomes experienced by players of all skill level. In other words, all players, regardless of skill, are more likely to experience wins and losses more proportionately. I think that right there is showing that they are trying to set it up to where your wins and losses are going to, in the event, net one. Like, if it, it sounds like they want you to win some matches and try to guarantee other losses and other matches, which if the algorithm is predetermining what it wants to see you do, then it, by default, it's not variable. It's trying to be a predictive system it knows what you're going to do. How are we supposed to have fun and expect randomness if it is predetermining how it wants our matches to go? I get we can outperform, but it says right here, that's what they're trying to do. They want it to be more proportionately. Our data shows that when lower skill players are consistently on the losing end, they are likely to quit matches in progress or stop playing altogether. Well, I'm sorry, I just quit matches when the BS is too high, and nowadays it's extremely high. My win-loss is the worst it's ever been, because I just don't care anymore. They are likely to quit matches in progress or stop playing altogether. This has an effect on the player pool. A small player pool means the wait times for matches increase, and connections may not be as strong as they should be. This can compound over time to create a spiral effect. Eventually, when only high-skilled players remain because lower-skilled players have quit out of frustration, the result is an ecosystem that is worse overall for everyone. Well, unfortunately, Activision, you're making lower-quality games lately, so those lower-skilled players are just quitting because it's not fun or they don't have anything fun to do, which is leaving us with just the people who are dedicated to only Call of Duty and are higher skilled players just playing against one another to which we're not having fun now and quitting as well. Once again, the Steam charts are showing your numbers are falling off hard. So that is a factor outside of skill-based matchmaking. Just keep that in mind. Game data indicates that having some limitations on the disparity of skill across the players in a match makes for a healthier ecosystem. We also understand that many high school players want more, more variety of experience, but often feel like they only get the sweaties to blobbies. We have heard this feedback clearly and will continue to test and actively explore ways to mitigate the concern. Bull. Bull, 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 bull. We have been complaining about this forever, how public matches feel... Uh, like ranked, sometimes stricter than ranked. In MW2, when I was playing ranked, the lobbies were that much easier. I would sometimes just go into ranked to relax, whereas pubs is a sweat fest. But okay, but this has been going on for many, many, many years. Keep that in mind. Advanced Warfare was really bad. Future communications. In addition to today's blog, our technology team is developing a ping and matchmaking white paper for those inclined to get into the more granular information about Call of Duty matchmaking. Staying tuned for more on this publication. Hopefully we can get that peered reviewed by people who are more into math. We have some mathematicians in our community who might be able to break some of this down and see what's going on. If they give us a lot of information or if they're cherry picking. To conclude, we wanted to answer some of the most frequently asked questions from the community, which are cherry picked. Does Call of Duty consider player engagement time played as a factor in matchmaking? We do not consider how often or how much you play when determining matchmaking. Sure. 
Does Call of Duty matchmaking process impact any in-game elements such as hit registration, player visibility, aim assist, damage, or etc.? They say no, our matchmaking process does not impact gameplay elements. Our matchmaking process does not impact gameplay elements. Words matter. That doesn't mean that there is not an in-game system that is affecting that. Of course, matchmaking will affect it if it's a real-time system within the match. Now, it's been a conspiracy thing that they're messing with stuff to give some players a better experience than others. Nothing has been proved. It's a conspiracy theory, but wording matters. Remember in life, the way people phrase things matters. Does spending money on Call of Duty content such as bundles, battle pass, or black cell change how players are matched? They say money spent not in any way, shape, or form factor into matchmaking. So they're, they're, not, they're saying like, if you buy something, your lobbies are not easier. It's just uh, placebo. I don't know. Does Call of Duty use bots in multiplayer matchmaking? Call of Duty multiplayer does not use bots as part of the general matchmaking process. If this changes in the future, we will inform the community. So uh, there is a misconception going around. There are services out there right now that you can hire who are putting bots into the game for you to match make with, but Activision is not putting bots in there as far as we know currently, but as part of the general matchmaking process, words matter. Do partners or content creators get special consideration in general matchmaking? Why do they keep calling it general matchmaking? What's the special matchmaking then? No, we do not change the matchmaking process based on who owns the account. In specific cases, such as for events like Call of Duty Next, we may be required to customize how lobbies are formed. However, these events take place in private matches and do not impact general matchmaking. So the whitelist that people claim exists for Call of Duty players, they're saying that that doesn't exist. But I think there's a whitelist to help top creators not get banned because they get mass reported, then they'll get shadow banned and then their their system is just worse they like they can't play because they've been shadow banned non-stop because people are reporting them so I, I believe there's a white list in that category within the ban system but easy lobbies i don't know have you ever considered an opt-in or opt-out system for matchmaking algorithm our data suggests that splitting the player base with an opt-in or opt-out matchmaking system will have a negative consequence on the overall player pool that means potentially longer wait times based on the type of matchmaking selected plus add into that playlist map and mode history platform and more and matches with poor connections i'm sorry giving people a choice to have skill-based matchmaking or not is going to affect your player retention it would help with player morale if you at least give them a choice if they go into a no skill based matchmaking system even if they have to wait a little bit longer and they enjoy it more so be it but guess what if lobbies didn't disband at all what's the problem because most people would stay in the lobby i see like this is a double-edged sword here right you want to maintain people playing and and having a good overall experience give them a choice and get rid of lobby disbanding but if you got rid of lobby disbanding because it still does it then the skill-based matchmaking system wouldn't work like it's designed because then it can't reset your you know state in the algorithm and they said it's continuously updating if they don't disband the lobbies they can't rebuild the lobbies more appropriate so give players a choice like why why can't you have you ever tested removing skill as a consideration for matchmaking we have run tests over the years to determine if removing skill as a consideration for matchmaking makes sense we will continue to launch these tests periodically to date the data remains consistent with what detailed above players tend to quit matches or stop playing if they're getting blown out resulting in negative overall experience for all players in the lobby and general player population we purposely do not disclose these tests occur because it may impact feedback or the data we see during these tests i don't know when they're doing it maybe there's a specific time they do it and that's why you know content creators get on early in the morning and find that it, it, they don't think they're skill based maybe that's when they're doing it i can't tell because i don't really notice that often when it's either toned back or turned off so i would love to know that time i don't tell us future times you're doing it but give us the data on previous times you did it so maybe we could go and find videos that were created or streams or whatnot to see if there's a correlation there's enough streams logged across twitch and youtube we can go and find out really quickly but we'll need the dates or the time even the dates we could go based off that so 
Have you considered removing skill from matchmaking in specific general multiplayer game modes? They have considered this in the past and will continue to examine if this idea makes sense as a part of the experimental playlist or in specific modes. We have nothing to announce on that front today. And that's where it concludes. I will say with that, I have been asking for years to give us literally a mode where stats are not tracked. That's called experimental mosh pit, where you will list out what you're doing in there. Like we've had it before where they had the highlighted thing and I think they have the MW2 maps. Clearly state, experimental mode, no skill-based matchmaking. Only ping is taken in and just let people test it and record the data, publish the data so we don't complain and we can move forward, you know, as adults, right? We can analyze everything. We can do everything correctly and it'll put things to bed. There could be a chance that turning off skill-based matchmaking we hate that mode and we want skill base to come back at a certain level where it's not punishing and not fun. So this is the, it's a whole lot of talk without a lot of specifics and very specific wording. I think that's why we didn't get this a week after season one launched and instead are getting the week before season two launches because they really need to focus on how the wording of this is. So in the end, I this doesn't satisfy me because it feels like they're leaving out a lot of stuff and picking their words very carefully to try and give us answers without giving us proper answers. But this at least this is a start. It's taken us, what, 13 years? Ever since Black Ops 2, which it got strict at the beginning and then they toned it back, we've known about skill-based matchmaking and then the whole advanced warfare where me and Drift got into a fight for the longest of times. They're at least started talking about it. Hopefully this continues. So... Thank you, Activision, for something, but we need more now. We really need more. Keep the communication flowing. We really need that in the COD community if you want to quell anything. So, all right, ladies and gents, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. What do you think about all this? Did they say a lot? Did they say not much? Let me know what you think. Drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys later. Peace.